All right, 3.4, principles of reliable data transfer. Now, you might see Polly is a little bit more alert uh, talking about this section because this is going to be the most challenging section in Chapter 3. And arguably, one of the most challenging sections for the entire textbook. All right, so let's talk about reliable data transfer. It's not only challenging, it's also extremely important, all right? So it's not only important at the transport layer, some of the link layer services might also implement some level of reliable data transfer. At the application layer, someone might be using UDP as the underlying transport layer service and implement its own reliable data transfer. So maybe it will be more efficient than TCP. Uh, instead of using the native TCP provided in the protocol stack, all right? So it's one of the top problems when one needs to design a communication network. Now, this is the setting. Uh, we have processes sitting at the application layer. Okay. There's application layer protocol, but there's also okay, transport layer services. These processes uh, depend down to transfer application level messages. So sending processes here, sending out data, data will go through a channel. Now this is a reliable data transfer service, so the channel is reliable. And hopefully at the other end, the receiving process grabs the data and then interpret the data and things will just work out. Okay. But the thing is, the internet is not exactly reliable, isn't it? So. Yeah, we do have unreliable channel uh, when packet goes through the internet infrastructure. Now, but application sending process receiving process are demanding reliable transfer. So transport layer service here, the sending side and the receiving side, each will need to implement some extra mechanism to ensure uh, somehow lost segment is recovered, somehow the flipped bits are corrected right so that is rdt okay and we'll go we're going to go through a few generations of these rdts and show you how the sending side is implemented how the receiving sides can be implemented such that we provide such a illusion to the application level services oh and by the way uh, it really depends on how unreliable the channel is underlying uh, then the complexity of the reliable data transfer can vary. Very unreliable, very complicated. Not that unreliable, then slightly simpler. Now, we'll be using these notations, RDT send, UDT send, and all these throughout the discussion introducing you generations of these reliable data transfer protocols. So let me blow it up and then explain a little bit further. All right, so sending processes here, uh, generating messages, those messages get passed down to the transport layer. And those messages are now called data, all right? And RDT send is the function called the sending process calls to pass the data down, okay? So let me bring it up, RDT send here, is to be called from above from the sending process okay and it is to pass the data down such that it will arrive at the receiver end good well and these messages is going to be processed here and a number of these segments will be generated or packets will be generated so when we're talking about generally reliable data protocol design let's just call these packets okay so messages now data segments is now packet and the action of pushing the packets down to the unreliable channel is udt send okay udt send so udt send here is called by the rdt the protocol sending side to transfer packets over the unreliable channel And then, yeah, data is going to travel through the channel and come to the network layer. 
So that network layer component would call this okay, RDT receive to pass the packet further up. So packets gets passed down by calling UDT send. Packets gets passed up okay, by calling RDT receive. Okay, and this is call from below from the network layer when packet arrives. And those packet will be processed here. Okay, and then the receiver side of the transport layer protocol is going to call yet another one. Receiver data function. So this is called by RDT, the receiver side, to deliver data to the receiving process above. So data here is going to be passed above. So four function calls to uh, refer to actions. First, coming from the sending process to the sending RDT. Second, from the sending RDT to the unreliable channel. Third, from the network layer to the receiving RDT. And the fourth, from the receiving RDT back up to the receiving process. Now, we'll try to describe generations of these reliable data transfer protocols. Um, as Polly mentioned slightly earlier, yeah, these various generations, uh, one is simpler, second slightly more complicated, third even more complicated. So they go from simpler RDTs to more complicated RDT. That's because we assume the underlying channel being more reliable to less reliable, to very, very general like the internet. All right. So that is just to prepare you for uh, the RDTs that we need to introduce coming ahead. Now, another thing that I need to introduce is how I'm going to describe these RDT mechanisms. We're going to use yeah, this thing called the finite stain machines. Okay. Finite stain machines, FSM. Okay, so here's one state, here's another state, two states. So finite number of states. Right. So this is a machine to go from one state to another station, uh, from one state to another state. You might have a transition saying that under this condition, then we go from state one to state two. And in the meantime, we transit from one state to another, we take this action. All right. So the arc here defines when we, a machine jump from one state to another, and what is the action to be taken corresponding to this event occurring. All right. So at each state, there could be number of events. Okay that could trigger the state changes. And that could also trigger additional actions to be taken. Okay? So provided a machine, a mechanism, uh, usually engineers can describe the, the mechanism using a finite station, a finite, sorry, I keep saying station, finite state machine like this. All right. So FSM is also, if you recall, uh, formal method, uh, I don't know, finite automata. Uh, when you're taking these courses, finite state machine is a notation that you are you should be familiar with because it's a way to describe a computational machine. Okay? And it's to describe it in a more formal way. Provided the machine, then the implementation will be straightforward. Uh, it's a little bit like when you take an algorithm course. Uh, after you learn how to write a pseudo code correctly, provided the pseudo code, your programmer that you hire uh, will be able to program. Okay. That is the only thing that's required uh, to communicate to the programmers. Oh, there's one more thing I neglected to mention. Yes, uh, we only consider a unidirectional data transfer. So what I meant there is that uh, one machine to another machine, data is going one way, and there's no data coming back. Okay, so data go, receiver, okay, and receiver might send feedback back. Uh, that those are called the control info. Okay, control info can go both ways, but data go, only go from the sender to the receiver. 